Hi everyone, welcome to Monktoberfest. Uh, I'm here with Drew Conway from NYU. Uh, and first order of business is to give Drew his speaker's gift. It is a beautiful bottle mm. of Allagash Curio, all aged in oak bourbon barrels. That is very exciting. <laughs> 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 Thanks very much. I'm very much looking forward to that. I'll skip it down. Okay. So Drew, uh, you gave us a, a fabulous talk this morning uh, about big data, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you give us a synopsis of it? Yeah. So the um, basic idea of my talk was twofold. One was the idea of introducing um, this notion that you know we've spent a lot of time, I think, over the last couple of years, kind of promoting data science as a discipline centered around tools, which is, of course is very important um, for people building those tools and people using them, but I wanted to come across or, or give the uh, give the notion that you need to focus on the questions. That really the the interesting thing about data science is we can ask questions of data that we never used to be able to, to ask, particularly around human behavior, um, because now we have social media platforms, the web in general, places where we can get data on human behavior that we never were able to do before. Uh, <coughs> so the important thing, rather than focus on tools, is to focus on trying to be inspired by what you see in the world and, and ask interesting questions. And then the second half of my talk was really just focusing on one example of this where a colleague of mine and I did a, a, a real short project on trying to rank the popularity of programming languages. Um, and the way that we did this initially was to scrape Stack Overflow and GitHub to rank uh, the programming language popularity based on the number of tags and the number of projects, respectively. Uh, and we did this once, and, and we got an, we got this result, which was just a scatter plot. We're sort of unsatisfied with that, thinking about it a year later. So what I talked about um, in the second half of my talk was using that same data to come up with a different way of ranking them. In this case, using what we call slope graph, um, which Edward Tufte. Um, has invented and then promotes to show to show rank correlations. And what's nice about this is that rather than just have this linear relationship that we can observe with the scatter plot, we can actually see these really neatly um, formed tiers of languages. So, um, just an example, sort of the question that we were asking in that case is how would one rank programming languages? And, and trying to talk through this idea of getting back to that question and thinking more critically about how do we answer that with our results. Okay. You also mentioned some of the technologies and programs you use to analyze the big data. Right. Uh, so, I, you know, my basic stack is usually R, the R programming language, and, and Python. Uh, and then, of course, when things get too big to fit memory, using some form of Hadoop uh, to go distribute it. Uh, and <clears throat> that's really for the, the, I mentioned in my talk, this notion of, of acquiring data and, and munging it and cleaning it uh, and then modeling it. So those languages and those platforms are what I'll use to do that. And then the final piece, which is explaining it and, um, and, and publishing results, uh, visually, I use you know a bunch of different platforms. So if I'm in R, I'll use the ggplot2 library, which is for visualization. Uh, and then now, more recently, I've become very um, excited about trying to publish things on the web uh, and using D3, which is a JavaScript library. Uh, and D3 stands for data-driven document. So it's a really nice um, library for doing data visualization, making it interactive uh, within the web. OK, cool. So if anyone wants to see your talk, we're going to have it live on redmonk.com slash tv and uh, we'll have the link in the, in the, at the end of this video. Excellent. Thanks, guys.